Bowen Distillery just released three new whiskeys, and this is the third one that we're reviewing. That's right, this week we're looking at the Postel whiskey from the Boan Distillery, finished in PX or Pedro Jimenez casks. Welcome back to the channel, I'm Matt and I'm the Whiskey Nerd. I'm Rose and I'm the Whiskey New. And like we said, this week we're looking at the new whiskey from the Boanda Distillery, a single pot still whiskey that was finished, I have to pour myself some whiskey. I mean, I can do the whole thing if you'd like. That was finished in PX or Pedro Jimenez casks. Now, mm -hmm. this is the third of a series of whiskeys. We've already reviewed two. I'll put a link up there and a link down below to the other ones. You can check them out afterwards. This is the third one. If you haven't already been familiar with the whiskeys, from Boan. I'm just gonna run through it real quick. All right, let's do it. I'm gonna run do. through it real quick. It's a pot still whiskey from Ireland. Style of whiskey that's unique to Ireland. It has to be made in Ireland. It has to be made with a minimum of 30% unmalted barley, a minimum of 30% malted barley, and at most 5% other grains. So some distilleries go in 50-50 down the middle, 70-30, 30-70, they do a whole range. Boan distillery, what they did was, at first, when they were like commissioning their stills, getting used to it, they made a bunch of 50-50, and then they moved over to a core mash bill, which is their mm. new mash bill, which won like the world's best mash bill, world, won the world's best new make whiskey. It was really good. It was really nice. And I think it was like 2020 or thereabouts. That mash bill. <laughs> it's <is> complicated. complicated. <laughs> it's 48.5% malted barley, 50% unmalted barley, 1.1% oats, and 0.4% rye. So it adds a bit of extra spiciness from the rye, a bit of extra creaminess from the oats, and it does make for a nice rounded out pastel spirit. Okay. So this whiskey here is mostly the like 50-50 mm -mm. and some of that that new mash bill. Okay. And they said that the whiskey is going to kind of evolve over time. Like the whiskeys are core products, like you'll always be able to buy it. But the whiskey in it will, like it'll start to have less of that 50-50 whiskey in it. So it'll change flavor it'll change over, over time. time. As they introduce more of that, uh, the new mash bill. Mm -hmm. And they did say that they were like open to feedback if people like like the original recipe versus yeah. the new recipe they bring back in. So they're willing to stay on feedback. So take notes. So take notes. Uh, like we said, it's one of three different bottlings that they've released as core bottles. This one here is an all sherry aged one. Oh my. So the other ones were bourbon and then a wine cask. Yeah. This one here was an Oloroso sherry cask for two and a half years before being put into a PX or Pedro Jimenez sherry for about a year, year and a bit. So it's about okay. three and a half years old. Okay. And it's entirely sherry. The PX gives a really nice, um, Kind of syrupy texture, yeah. to it, really nice and sweet. Interestingly, they did say um, so before they put out the Boan whiskey, they were sourcing whiskey under okay. the Whistler range. Oh yeah! And the very first whiskey they put out, they finished it in a in an Oloroso sherry cask. It was called the Whistler Blue Note. And what they did was after they finished off that whiskey, they released that whiskey. They filled that cask with the whiskey. Really? Yeah. So it's it's. it's is it's, this why this is blue? Uh, I don't think so. Okay. I think it's just design. Uh, but yeah, so part of that, like kind of the journey of moving from that sourced stock into the new stock. Yeah. So they had that old cask from okay. the from the Whistler range, refilled it, and put it some of it into here. Okay. So you get that kind of like the continuity, and it's it's going to give sustainability. A, sustainability and a bit of like yeah, just a bit of history to it. Yeah. So it's nice. Um, the whiskey comes in at forty-seven percent alcohol by volume. Mm -hmm. So it's nice. It's not super high. So it's gonna burn, but it's not super low, so yeah. it doesn't have any flavor. 46, 48, 47. That's a nice little All little. very good range. A nice little My little. favorite kind of range, yeah. particularly 46. It's natural color and does have a nice deep dark color. Uh, it's non-chill filtered. The bottle is really cool. Won't go into the bottle, but it's it's very nice. Like yeah, check out the previous videos, really. Yeah. Check out the previous videos. It's very nice, like a lot of thought went into the bottle. Very Absolutely. Nice. And I think Let's That's do this! It. So we're gonna go in for the nose on this one. And we are gonna do a video where we compare all three whiskeys, so make sure to check back for this. But right now we're just gonna focus on the PX one. Ooh. Oh. Slancha. Cheers. Cheers. That's very sherry. It's very sherry. Like it ah. one thing about PX casks, it's You know it's gonna you know, be a PX. You know it's gonna be if PX has this syrupy, viscous stewed plums, mm -hmm. dried figs. Do you like, think that was 
reason it goes well with pot still because pot still is like the oily bit and this this is syrupy it's kind of yeah. like similar vibes yeah it's like it's not fighting against it yeah and it's the working pot still together adds a nice bit of spicy to it yeah so like a single malt in a px cask it's very sweet mm -hmm. like it's almost almost too sweet sometimes mm -hmm. Pia, uh, sorry, pot still because you got that bit of spice, peppery spice comes yeah. through. It kind of balances. It means it's not just, oh, it's all sweet. Yeah. It's sweet and spicy coming through. Yeah. But here, like... Sugar, spice, and everything nice. Yeah, like the Oloroso sherry typically gives like almost um, like nuttiness and that, like, like oh. walnuts, almonds, that kind of thing. Uh. PX also gives a bit of nuttiness, but more on the fruit. Okay. It's like Oloroso is fruit and lots of nuts, whereas PX is almost like lots of fruit and a bit of nuts. Okay. Is, it's it is hard, once you taste them, you know the difference, but yeah, this is... What kind of fruit? Maybe will we have to taste it to find out? We might have to taste it, but I'm getting okay. like um, like dried fruits, like... A fig? Fi like figs, plums, things like that. Yeah. Okay. Like, you know, uh, like a sticky toffee pudding. You know, yes. you, you, use the, you blend up the figs to mm -hmm. it, that kind of like really sugary, almost like okay. caramelized sugar, but in a fruit, that kind of, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I get that. Yeah, and like it's it's quite nice, quite syrupy. Like it's a PX cask. It's hard to go wrong with a PX cask. So I think let's go in for the palate. Okay. And see if it still is. I'm nice. excited. Cheers. Cheers. Yeah, that is good. I'm I'm gonna cover the word they've described it with on the back. What would you describe it as? Oh my god. So the first one was like uh, elegant. Then you had. Beautiful. This one is. I don't know. Decadent. Decadent. Yeah, I was gonna call it a thick boy. It's a thick boy. It is. But I don't think they would have put a thick boy boan single pot still on the back. No, the thick boy boan. No, this it's it's sweet. It's yeah. Syrupy. It's. It's forward. It's I got a lot of spice. Yeah, like, that's what I was saying, but like the pot still and the PX kind of working together, yeah. not against each other. Like Yeah, you can tell because it's the thickness together with like a yeah. smooth spice. Yeah, it's again, it's like those dried figs, dried, mm. like you get a lot of that, like, yeah, like almost like a dried mango slice, that kind of tech, oh. imagine, a, not, not, not the flavor of mango, but imagine like the sweetness of the mango, like yeah. where when you dry out a fruit, it's not like a raisin where it's still like quite soft yeah where you dry mango it's and you hard get, you gotta like kind of bite at almost it almost like and you get that really concentrated sugar yeah think of that for like a raisin for like a, a, a fig or things like that where you get like a lot of sugar yeah yeah that kind of syrupy note oh absolutely i'm gonna go in again okay like there's a nice bit of like nuttiness coming through again like those oh, wall like almost like, like um, toasted nuts yeah like those kind of dried again a lot of dried fruits dried yeah. nuts yeah like it's reminding me a bit of like um like a Christmas cake or a Christmas pudding mm. where you get those dried fruits, a lot of sugar, a lot of dried nuts and that kind of flavor coming yeah. through. Like it's quite sherry. I mean, it was entirely Asian sherry, so you yeah. get a lot of sherry and it's come through quite nicely here, I think. Yeah, yeah. I think so too. Like there's a little bit of, I wouldn't like, again, like orange, but not orange. Like again, like I'm thinking like Christmas cake now. Yeah. I'm thinking like, you know where you get the orange peel that's been chopped up? Yeah. And it's sugary and it's been put into a cake. Mm. And you get that kind of like, it's sugary, it's soft. It's not like bright and shiny. It's yeah. like down, yeah. Yeah, but sugary. in it. In it, yeah, it's mixed in. It makes sense flavors. to be part of it. Yeah, I'm not really getting a lot of the grains coming through. Oh no. On the other ones, I got a bit more grain. This one is more that sherry influence all yeah, the way. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah, don't go in for the finish. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Okay, so again, big hit of sherry. Yes. Up front. It's not the longest finish. No. Like it's quite, like it's, I'm still tasting it. Yeah, I still get it, like that mouth feel of it yeah. still, but there's but no like burn or no. anything. And there's no like heavy duty oak spice lingering no. on. It's like that, again, it, almost like you've, like you've eaten a bit of fruit or like yeah. those dried fruits. And you can still taste it, but it's not like a strong note. It's just yeah. like there. It's kind of coating your yeah. mouth. Yeah, but it's not like it just ended abruptly. It no. was just like a. It's a short finish, but it tapers off. Yeah, it doesn't smooth. just fall off a cliff. It kind of. Yeah. It's a taper. Yeah, like it's again. You get like I'm feeling a little bit of warmth. Okay. Uh, but not like hot. Just like a little bit of like warming, like that okay. spiciness. Okay. Not super. It's 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 nice. It's not. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's a sherry finished whiskey that was aged in sherry. Like. They hit the nail on the head, like they were yeah. aim aiming for sherry, and they got sherry. They got sherry. Yeah. I feel like there's just like this lightest, the ever so lightest of tingling, like yeah. on my tongue. Yeah, that little bit of pot still. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I like that pot still. Yeah. Before we give our final thoughts yes. on this whiskey, if you're new here, scroll down, hit that thumbs up button, hit that subscribe button. We put 
out whiskey reviews every Wednesday and we put out cocktail recipes featuring whiskey every Friday and there will be a cocktail recipe featuring this whiskey this Friday so make sure you check back for that. But final thoughts, Rose? I like it. Yeah, this one I really like. Now, I'm a, I'm a sucker for PX finishes. Like, I know <laughs> you like PX. Was it the PX I Love You whiskey? Yeah. Yeah, you also, like, the whiskey called PX I Love You. Yeah. Or PS I Love You. We like, yeah, it's, it's hard to go wrong. Can't really go wrong with it. With a PX. good PX. If you get a good, like, the casks they used for this, I think they were like 60 year old casks. Oh. Some of them were like made of chestnut. So there was a lot of flavor. It weren't just like a cask that had PX sherry put into it for like a year yeah. and then taken out. This was like proper good casks. Yeah. And I think it came through and gave it a lot of flavor. Absolutely. Like yeah. you can tell that like Boan is really trying new and different things, making tweaks here and there to really make like a whole like, I don't know, just, is it a new style of whiskey? It's taken pot still, but like elevating it. Yeah. That's and it. And I think their cask program is quite good. Yeah. Like they, they buy. Evolved. Yeah. They've got a they, cause the family had like connections with like the spirits industry and stuff. So they knew a lot of people. I think they got a lot of different casks. Yeah. Like they, they've got egg casks that are like shaped like an egg. I'll see if I can find a picture <laughs> of it up there. It's weird. Like it can't go in a normal yeah. kind of a area. It has to go in a special thing. So there's loads of like interesting things about it. And I think the cast they've chosen are good. And it means that you're gonna get a good whiskey, even though it's only three and a half years old. Oh, it's a good whiskey. It's a good whiskey. You know, it, it is coming in at 70 euro yeah. in Ireland. It might be cheaper where you are because the alcohol tax is quite high in Ireland. Yeah. But I think 70 euro is fair for this. I think so like, too. For about, it's about the same price as like a green spot, yeah. a whiskey like that. But it's from a new distillery doing something different yep. with a lot of sherry and a lot more. Kind of, it's it's different. It's different, yeah. but also very fun with the design. And also very very well designed, very yeah. well put together. And like we said, it's they're going to be putting out more whiskeys in the future, so they do have that funding to keep going. But yeah, I quite like it. See, I'm going to keep on enjoying it, <laughs> and we will see you next time. Slaunter. Bye bye.